Hello, welcome to Tech Web Dots. Today, I am going to share what is prototype design pattern with very easy code example. So let's move ahead. What are the points that I'm going to discuss in this session? Prototype design pattern under creational design pattern and what are its use cases and code coverage. And we will also discuss the advantages as well. If you have basic understanding of object oriented programming, then it will be a piece of cake for you. And I strongly suggest you to watch the videos, types of design pattern and solid design principles. So let's move ahead where we are. So in our last session, I already discussed, we use creation design pattern to deal with object creational mechanism, especially it focuses on how the objects are created and utilized in an application to solve the problem by somehow controlling the object creation. And we already know there are five categories of creation design pattern and all the four where I mentioned green take, I've already discussed abstract, builder, factory method, and singleton. So the last one is prototype that we are going to cover today. Okay, so let's first go by definition. So according to the definition, in prototype design pattern, we specify the kinds of objects to create using a prototype instance. Okay, now you will be thinking, what is prototypical instance? Don't worry, I will explain with example in Visual Studio and create new objects by copying this prototype. Okay, so what is the actual concept behind this? This pattern provides an alternative method for instantiating new objects by copying or cloning an instance of an existing object. Very simple. You can avoid the expense of creating new instances using this concept. Okay, that's the overall concept of this prototype design pattern. Let's assume you already have an application which is already stable and in future you may want to modify the application with some small changes and then analyze further. So obviously you will not recreate the application to make few changes. Obviously you will clone something and you will perform few modification if everything works fine you will merge. Okay so that's how you work. So that's the concept of this prototype design pattern and the best way to explain is through an example. So let's understand first how example going to work and then we will jump into the code editor. Okay. So here is the example. We have our basic car. Okay. Which is our prototype and Nano and Ford are the concrete prototypes. Okay. This Nano and Ford is our concrete prototype and they have implemented the clone method defined in basic car. Okay. So in this car, we have clone method. Don't worry, we will see all these things in practical and basic car object has some defined price later modified price as per the model. Okay, this is, this is the basic structure how it looks like we have a basic car with clone method and these two are the concrete prototype which are implementing the clone method of basic car and it is used by client or you can say program.cs file. So how the UML architecture will look like? So we have a client that contains some method which is going to call this abstract prototype clone. Okay. And this clone is further implemented by prototype one and prototype two. Okay. So the example that we are going to implement, it will look like that. Basic car will be an abstract class which contains clone method and set price. Okay. And it will be used in Ford and Nano car. Okay, where we will be implementing this clone method and also using this Ford and Nano constructor. Let me switch to Visual Studio to see all these things in action. Here is our Visual Studio. You can see this is the same solution that I was using in my all previous design pattern series. Okay, so for the interest of time, I have already created the important piece of code. Here's a folder prototype pattern and I have created three classes. Okay, and there will be one class which is a startup class from where we are using all these three classes. Here is our class diagram that we have already seen. Okay. So the very first thing is we are using a basic car, which is our abstract class. Okay. It contains two properties, model name and price. Okay. And it contains one static method, which is set price. Static method means we can also call this method with the help of this class without creating the instance. Okay, and we have one abstract member which is of basic car type, which is of this type basic car, and it contains method name clone. Okay, so the moment we are specifying it is abstract member, it means we need to override this clone method 
in all the child classes that will be implementing this basic car okay so the first example is nano so nano is our car and it is implementing the basic car and here is our con constructor in that what we are doing so we are setting the model name model name is coming if you will see it is coming from basic car okay that we are implementing in this nano car and it is coming from parent which is basic car okay and now we are overriding the basic car type clone method okay and what we are doing we are creating a shallow copy of the current object shallow copy is going to return the object of this nano car okay you can see we are typecasting this object okay it is returning the actual object and we are saying the object it is cloning it will be of type nano okay i will explain in detail don't worry for now we are just copying this nano object by using this clone method okay and the same thing we are doing in ford class as well implementing basic car it contains its constructor we are setting the model name which is coming from basic car and we are overriding the clone method of type basic car okay and here again we are using member wise clone method of object okay and we are saying it is returning ford type object okay and because ford is implementing basic car that's why we can return in this way now let's move to startup and see how we're going to call all these three classes so let me tell you so this solution i am just uh, commented all the using a statement that i am not using and just commenting all piece of code okay other than the one that i really want to test okay so you can see all other sections are commented and all section contains builder pattern bridge adapter strategy observer and more okay you can check out the link of the github repo for this project if you want you can take on your machine and practice as much as you can let's come back to this solution so what we are doing here we are creating a basic car type variable which is nano base okay and we are getting new instance of nano and assigned to this nano base then again we are getting one more variable of type basic car and we are assigning new of ford why we are able to assign because ford and nano both are implementing this basic car so abstract class can contain the reference of the class which are inheriting the one okay and we are also at the same time initializing the price 1 lakh and 5 lakh okay and also initializing the name as well you know in constructor we are setting its name so that's why or nano base and ford is ready with new object now what we are doing in the next line we are creating one more basic car type variable okay and now we are not creating the new instance of nano or ford okay what we are doing from nano base we are saying we want to clone the one okay so from nano base cloning we will get the instance of nano in this basic car one okay so in basic car one dot price so we can set nano base dot price and basic car dot set price is the one which is the static method that i shared with you right if i go here so this is the static one so we can call it by class name okay and assign it to price okay and then we are simply writing onto the response car is this and its price is uh, basic car one dot model name and basic car one dot price and same thing we are doing for ford as well from ford base we are cloning and now we have the ford class instance bc1 okay this time and for calculating the price we are calling ford base dot price and we are calling basic car dot set price okay and we know it is a random random number so we know it is a random number we are using for calculating the set price okay so let's see what is the output that we are getting after running the solution let me run the solution this is the expected solution you can see car is red nano which is the name initialized and its price is 3,36,530 and similarly car is blue ford and its price is blah blah okay so this is the expected output that I was really thinking. I hope it is clear now how it is working. Let's go back to the solution. Don't worry about the piece of code. 
GitHub repo link is given in the description of this video. So let's go back to the presentation to discuss very very important points only. Okay. So we have already seen uh, how things are working for this. So let's move ahead from here. So the very first question which was running in your mind is can you elaborate the difference between shallow copy and I will also discuss the deep copy as well so that you have better understanding uh, you know whenever there is a question about the copy of the object you have already seen I used member wise clone method of object based class in the implementation so it performs a shallow copy now you will think what is shallow copy shallow copy creates a new object and then copies the non static fields from the original object to the new object. So according to MSDN, if there exists a value type field in the original object, a bit by bit copy is performed. But if the field is a reference type field, this method will copy the reference, not the actual object copied. Okay. So the original object and the clone object both refers to the same object. If you need a deep copy in your application, that can be expensive i will explain you why okay but few more points why do we need to clone the object you must be thinking right so there are few reasons one reason can be you may want to pass an object to some other module for processing and you want to ensure that the original instance is not accidentally tampered within the process and you just want to get the feel of how the object will be after the changes but you don't want to actually change the object so you just want to test that one okay and another reason can be the new object and an existing one might closely match each other so you can clone the first one modify just a few properties that are different and then use the new instance that you want okay so this can be the very basic reason and one more reason can be at times creating a new instance using the new keyword might add overhead of the object creation process okay because sometimes it's difficult for creating the new object and let me show you further things that I have prepared for you I mean how the object looks like before copy after shallow copy and after deep copy okay so very first you can see in this example we have x1 which is referring y1 and which is referring z1 okay so these three are connected objects okay so if we perform a shallow copy then how it will look like a new instance is assigned to x2 which is ultimately referring to y1 and then y1 is referring to z1 that's how it works after shallow copy but if you will perform a deep copy then new x3 is created which is further created y3 which will be a actual copy of y1 and it will create another copy z3 that will be a copy of Z1. That's why we say deep copy is expensive in an application. I hope it is clear now. So let's move ahead for the further very very important points only. You must be thinking what are the key advantages of using prototype design pattern. So you can include or discard products at runtime. When we are saying products it means at runtime you can decide what you want to call. Okay. You can create new instances with a cheaper cost it means we are just copying not giving uh, expensive or tedious parameters to create the object you can focus on the key activities rather than focusing on the complicated instance process okay client can ignore the complex creation process for objects and instead simply clone or copy the objects okay now you must be thinking what are the drawbacks or challenges associated with a prototype pattern so each subclass must implementing the cloning mechanism can be challenging if the objects under consideration do not support copying or you can think about if there are circular reference which is very dangerous okay so these types of challenges you can face i hope this pattern is clear now if you have any suggestion any comment you can leave into the comment box and don't forget to provide your feedback that's the only inspiration for me to create such videos so don't forget to like and subscribe i will see you in the next video till then bye bye